We're doing a practice exercise on page 179 in the textbook. We're still working with calorimeter, but this time we have a different type of calorimeter. I can tell we have a different type of calorimeter because they're telling us that we're burning something instead of just mixing two substances and allowing a reaction to happen. And they're also giving us a heat capacity of the calorimeter. The only time they would give us the heat capacity of the calorimeter is if we're dealing with the bomb calorimeter. Remember that this is a slightly different type of calorimeter, and instead of constant pressure, this one's constant volume. Other than that, things are pretty similar. We're just going to use a slightly modified equation. So with the constant pressure calorimeter, the coffee cup calorimeter, we used Q equals MC delta T. Now we're just going to use Q equals C times delta T. So all we need is the heat capacity of the calorimeter and the change in temperature. So pretty straightforward here. They're asking us the heat of combustion of lactic acid, and they're asking us in two different unit types, per gram and per mole. So the first thing we're going to need to do is figure out what that heat of combustion is. So we're just going to use that equation, Q equals the heat capacity, which is 4.812 kilojoules per degree C, and we're going to multiply that by the change in temperature, which is T final minus T initial. So that's the final temperature. That's the initial temperature there, and that's going to be in units of degrees C. So the units of Celsius are going to cancel out, leaving us with units of kilojoules. Okay, so going through and performing those calculations, your book is going to round this to three significant figures because when you do the subtraction, you're going to get 1.85 degree C. So I'll go ahead and round it to three significant figures, which is so when we do this calculation, we're going to get a final answer of 8.90 kilojoules. And if you think carefully about this, this is the kilojoules, this is the heat that was absorbed by the calorimeter. So this is Q calorimeter. We should know by now that the Q, the heat absorbed by the calorimeter, is equal and opposite to the heat released by the reaction. Because if the temperature of the calorimeter is increasing, that's because the calorimeter is absorbing heat while the reaction is releasing heat. So that means that the Q for the reaction is actually equal to negative 8.90 kilojoules. And since they're telling us they want it in the unit of kilojoules per gram, we're just going to divide that by the 0 0.5865 grams of the substance we have, giving us a final answer of negative 15.2 kilojoules per gram. And again, this negative sign makes sense. This is a combustion reaction. It's going to be exothermic. We're releasing heat. Next half we're looking at, it's a similar idea, but instead of wanting it in kilojoules per gram, they want it in kilojoules per mole, which means we need to know how many moles of lactic acid we were working with. In order to convert from grams to moles, we're going to need to know the molecular weight of the lactic acid, which is 90.0. So we're going to want to convert those grams into moles. And we're going to get a very, very small number, 0 0.006517 moles of this lactic acid. So now we're going to do a similar calculation to what we did in the kilojoule per gram. It's just going to be kilojoules per mole. So we still have that negative 8.90 kilojoules. This time we're going to divide it by the 0 0.006517 mole. Again, rounding to three significant figures is going to give us a final answer of negative 1370 kilojoules per mole for this reaction. Again, the negative sign makes sense because it's still an exothermic reaction, and it makes sense that it's also higher, so a larger number, because we had very few moles of this substance. So a few points to remember, when you're doing calculations with a bomb calorimeter, the equation is slightly different. You don't need the mass, you just need the heat capacity and the change in temperature. 
And always with calorimetry, make sure you're thinking about the heat from the calorimeter and the heat from the reaction. Remembering that they are equal in magnitude, but they're going to have opposite signs.